Yo, 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 welcome back to the Destination Debbie program. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here and make sure you smash that subscribe button at the bottom of the screen so every time I drop some new gas, you'll have it right there on your phone or your laptop. But I appreciate you being here. This is the Rookie Report Week 4 edition you know me, Destination Devi. We love rookies. We love rookie picks. We love college football. So that is what this show is based on. We talk about these rookies value week in and week out. Who are the risers? Who are the fallers? Who are players we need to go acquire? Who are some rookies that we need to go sell? But I can't start this show without talking about B.O.B. Bill O'Brien being relieved of his duties by the Houston Texans. Thank goodness. Thank goodness after he's completely wrecked that team, stripped them of draft picks. But you know what? You've got Deshaun Watson. There are some pieces there to build around. So hopefully they get the right coach in place to unleash Deshaun Watson because he needs it. But back to the rookies. Week four, the NFL is over and things are starting to take shape. We are really starting to see some trends. There are some rookies that we can finally like truly buy into as weekly starters for our fantasy team and for long-term assets in Dynasty, and I'm excited to jump into it. We're going to kick this thing off right after we hear a word from my man, Gus Johnson. Drop the intro, baby. You got barbecue back there, and you didn't invite me to hurt my feelings. All right, so we normally do a Rookie of the Week I'm not going to do that because there were a ton of really good performances, but none of them really stood out above the others for me. But I want to start this off by talking about a player here in the great state of Texas, and I'm talking about C.D. Lamb, wide receiver of the Dallas Cowboys, five for 79, two touchdowns. And as long as rain, Dakota Prescott is slinging that rock and doing shit that we haven't seen done before ever in NFL history through the first four weeks, CeeDee Lamb is going to be a consistent starter for me in seasonal leagues, and he's going to be a massive screaming buy in Dynasty. Lamb is a stud, man, and as much as some people want to elevate him as the wide receiver one for Dallas, he ain't that yet, all right? He's not the number one top guy in Dallas. Amari Cooper is still a top 10 dynasty wide receiver, very young in his own right. He led the team in targets, receptions, yards. He's a freaking beast. Amari Cooper is is gets clueless. You get clueless Clue Cooper from time to time as evidenced by that lackluster route on the towards the goal line, the final interception that Dak threw. But Cooper's still a stud. But the wide receiver too, and I talked about this weeks ago, is CeeDee Lamb. And I know Michael Gallup is talented. He's going to be a great wide receiver on another team. But CeeDee Lamb's better, man. CeeDee Lamb, and, and I know that is, is hot to say that from a wide receiver who just uh, had 1,100 yards the season before. But Lamb just sees different, man. He's he's. He's the guy. He's this. He's the number two for Dak Prescott outside of tight end Dalton Schultz. So CeeDee Lamb is still a huge buy. He's going to be a weekly starter for us. I think he's a flex play from here on out, and he's only going to continue to get better and better as he's, as he's acclimated into this offense. So as bad as Dallas's defense is, they're going to need to score points. Dak Prescott has a flamethrower on his arm, so CeeDee Lamb I don't know how much higher he can rise, but he's a rookie riser. CeeDee Lamb is an absolute stud. Now let's talk about another wide receiver, Denver Broncos wideout Jerry Judy. And with Cortland Sutton gone for the season, with KJ Hamler, I think he banged up his his hamstring. You know, you got Tim Patrick, you got Jerry Judy, Noah Fan is out. Judy went two for 61, one TD. Really a lot of his, uh, that production came on a, a, a highlight reel catch where the defensive back let the ball hit him in the face, and then Jerry Judy took it from him. But Judy's going to see the volume. He's going to have an opportunity to be the guy, especially when Drew Locke comes back under center. I think there are more good things ahead for Jerry Judy, and we still haven't seen that Jerry Judy blow-up game, which is destined to happen at some point in time. So Jerry Judy is another one of those rookies in Week 4 that I believe that we can depend on as a flex play moving here forward. Now, T. Higgins. T, big T Higgins. T Higgins is the number two option in Cincy. A.J. Green is cooked. 
AJ Green, every dude, every time AJ Green gets tackled, he's getting up slow as hell. I'm thinking he's hurt. He hurt his wrist. He's getting these empty targets. Just get T. Higgins involved. Four for 77, seven targets, second to Tyler Boyd. Joe Mixon running well last week. This is good. This is good for T. Higgins. He is, listen, he was a damn near first round pick. First pick in the second round of the NFL draft. They had all night to think about it. Came back, said, give me the big boy from Clemson. And he and Joe Burrow are going to be fantastic. And there's still an opportunity for you to buy T. Higgins in Dynasty because he has not had that blow-up game. Yes, he had two touchdowns the week before, but he hadn't just dominated, right? He hasn't had that Justin Jefferson 7-for-175 game yet, but it's coming for T. It is coming but you still have an opportunity to buy him in Dynasty. Go trade for T. Higgins. Make that move. T. Higgins is a rookie on the rise, baby. Ho-hum every week, James Robinson makes an appearance on this list. And he's back again. 17 for 75, four receptions for 32 yards. He's, He's an RB1. He is a running back one for the rest of the season as long as he remains healthy. And there was a lot of chatter on Twitter about James Robinson. There are two contrasting sides, right? It's the sell James Robinson because he's an undrafted free agent on a team who's most likely going to have coaching staff turnover and therefore no investment in James Robinson. You know, a year and a half later, he could be relegated to the bench. They could draft a Travis Etienne or a Najee Harris. The other side of that argument is he is an RB1, and if you're a contending team, he's going to help win you a fantasy title as long as he's healthy. I think it's the rare case of a win-win on both sides. If you keep James Robinson, he helps you win a fantasy title. If you trade James Robinson, and I saw trades last week of James Robinson for Joe Mixon straight up, that's a win. You get Joe Mixon for a player that you got off the waiver wire, That's a freaking win. So James Robinson, I think he's the rare case of a win-win on either side. Trade him, keep him, whatever you want to do. He's locked and loaded. He's a stud. Well, his future remains to be seen, but he's a good player. He's a really, really good player. And four weeks in a row, he's been on this list, and he's about to get the Joe Burrow treatment where these type of players just don't even show up anymore because it's just automatic. All right, let's talk about J-Rob's teammate, Visca Chenault. LaVisca Chenault, he went five for 86 on six targets, second on the team in targets to DJ Chark, who blew up last week. But Visca, man, I, I said it. Go back to any pre-draft podcast that I made, any pre-draft video talking about wide receivers. The reason why I was fading LaVisca Chenault because, was because of the injury history, and that was wrong. Because I did say in the same breath that he was the most talented of the wide receivers in the 2020 class as long as he could stay on the field, and he's staying on the field, and he's showing it. Visca is a volcano waiting to erupt. He is a tank. He is massive. He is fast. He is physical. He is good. And he's, he's producing without scoring. He's producing without having that blow-up game. But you know what's coming. It is rumbling. It's like, it's, it's like your stomach after a, a wild Saturday night of alcohol and other enticing delectables. And then Taco Bell where you wake up at 3.30 at 4 o'clock in the morning and your shit is rumbling. And you know Bad news is about to happen. It is about to go down. Visca's Taco Bell game is on the way. It is it is close, people. I'm and and when he has it, it ain't gonna be like five for one eleven and two. It's going to be Taco Bell mixed with Hennessy, mixed with a couple of joints, mixed with some other stuff in your toilet. It's gonna be bad. It's going to be explosive. It's going to be good, bad, good, explosive. Visca's blow game is coming. Go get him. There are, there is still time to acquire the Visca Chenault in Dynasty and in seasonal leagues. He's the number two target for, for um, Gardner Minshew. He's the number two target. It's coming, baby. Get Visca. All right, another week, another week of Justin Jefferson going over 100 yards. Four for 103. Clear second to Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen is balling, people. Like, we can't discredit Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen is balling. He is the number one option for Kirk Cousins, but Justin Jefferson is, uh, he's a stud, and it makes me feel really bad 
that I, I talked about it on the on the previous show, Terrible or Terrific Trade Thursdays. Look out for that dropping tomorrow. I traded him for James Conner, man. I, I, I am not happy. I feel bad because he's good. I needed a running back in that league, by the way. But Justin Jefferson's a stud, man. I, I think next year he's going to be the guy. He's smooth. He's fast. He's dynamic. He's cocky. He's confident. He's good. He's good. Justin Jefferson, rookie on the rise. And if we had to redo rookie wide receiver rankings right now, everyone knows my love and affinity for Jalen Rager. He's dropping. He's dropping down because your best ability is your availability. And unfortunately for him, he has not been available. It would be CeeDee Lamb, and it would probably be Justin Jefferson, 1-2, followed by probably LaVisca Chanel. It's that's, that's how fluid this shit is, man. Things change. You got to react to to what the market is telling us. And the market says that Justin Jefferson is one of the top rookie wide receivers in the NFL. And he's already blown up one week. And he did another 100 yards on four freaking catches, five targets. So here we go. Justin Jefferson, Rays, rookie on the rise. All right. I told you people, don't panic. I said, do not panic. Antonio Gibson, finally, they're utilizing him in the passing game. Four for 82 on five targets, 13 carries, 46 yards in a TD. That ain't even blow up, man. It's just, l- listen, I thought that they would like try him out. We'll see how he looks, but they're probably going to invest in a running back in 2021. I don't think that's the case. They need a QB. They need offensive line help. They need help other places. Running back, they don't need it. You know, maybe later they get a, a, a spell back, a Jarrett Patterson type guy to, to relieve him, to spell him. Gibson just might be the guy. He literally might be the guy. And when you look at what he did well at Memphis, it was playing that running back wide receiver hybrid. So it was good to see him utilized that way on Sunday. I, it, I, I talked about Nick Chubb. I acquired a lot of Nick Chubb last week. I think I traded for Nick Chubb in four leagues. I traded for Antonio Gibson in the same amount of leagues. I mean, I've been buying Gibson everywhere that I can, and I will continue to do so because the talent is there. The talent is there, and he's starting to get the opportunity, and he looks good doing it. So Antonio Gibson, rookie on the rise, baby. All right. Hey, last week I talked about him. He He ain't play. He ain't do anything. He was just stank. DeAndre Swift, four carries, 22 yards. So, yeah, yeah, not Not really. But four receptions, 30 yards, one touchdown, we'll take it. We'll take it. Got to move him up just a tad bit, bump him back up a little bit. And in that game, and I have not checked to see what happened with Carrion Johnson, but when I was watching, Johnson got hit. Johnson got hurt. He was grimacing in pain. I don't know if he came back in. Don't know what the prognosis is or the diagnosis. But if he's hurt, if he is hurt, This bodes well for DeAndre Swift. So Swift is one of those guys where if you could sustain and just make it into the playoffs towards the end of the season, you might have the, gosh, I'm tired of people using this shit, league winner on your hand with DeAndre Swift. All right, so there aren't many quarterbacks to talk about. So Joe Burrow is sort of default. He's a stud. He's good. He's going to be a top 10 dynasty quarterback, top eight dynasty quarterback here really soon. But it's time to start talking about Justin Herbert as a future top 14 dynasty QB, Hallitzer Herbert, 20 for 25, 293 TDs, one interception, got his ass blasted on the sideline, shook it off like a G, got up, went back in the game. He's big, he's athletic, and he's got this Chargers offense humming. It's good for Keenan Allen. Austin Eckler went down. So they're going to have to rely on Herbert. And he hadn't even gotten freaky with his legs yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, Herbert's legit. The quiet assassin that he is, Herbert's legit. He's good for real NFL, and he's good for fantasy. He's somebody that in two QB leagues, super flex leagues, you can roll Herbert out there. I think you can roll Herbert out there starting this week. As long as they don't pull him for Tyrod, which I don't think they would, just sucks that Tyrod's going to go down like this, right? Like, what the hell are you doing? Medical staff, it's bullshit, man. I hope he. I hope there's some kind of, hope there's some kind of relief for him, some compensation for for this, because that that's crazy, man. But Justin Herbert's look really, really, really good. All right, making his intro debut on the Rookie Report, Keyshawn Vaughn. Keyshawn Vaughn 
Didn't do anything on the ground. Three carries, four yards, but he got two receptions, 22 yards, and a touchdown. And listen, LaShawn McCoy banged up. Leonard Fournette banged up. O.J. Howard out for the season. Chris Godwin banged up. Mike Evans banged up. They're going to have to find pass catchers. And Ronald Jones, while he looked pretty good on the ground, he did get some work in the, through the air. He dropped a lot of passes too. Ronald Jones is like, he's like, you know, when I go to Wingstop, Buffalo Wild Wings, I prefer Wingstop, but when I go eat wings, um, lemon pepper, I, I, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm, it's gristle. Like that bone is clean, clean bone. Ronald Jones leaves a lot. He's like, he bites it like three times and just throws it down. He leaves a lot of meat on. That ain't how we eat with Destination Debbie. That ain't how you eat, man. You clean the bone. You clean the bone, and Ronald Jones ain't doing it. And they're going to have to find some production in other places. Kenyon Barner was in the game, got hurt. Listen, you know, Keyshawn Fine was a third-round pick. People lost their damn minds when he went to Tampa. Maybe it just took him some time to get acclimated. Maybe we were all wrong. Maybe I slandered him on Twitter. I did. I slandered him. If he comes back and does his thing, I said, I was wrong, baby. Got no problem with that. But Keyshawn Vaughn is somebody you should be trying to acquire, man. Third round pick, you probably can get him right now. Go ahead and snatch up Vaughn while people are still sleeping on him. Keyshawn Vaughn makes the list a little bit of a rise for him. Now, Damian Harris. Damian Harris went over 100 yards. He got all the rushing work. 17 carries, I believe he had. 17, 18, however many carries he had. Over 100 yards. Uh, 50% of that production damn near came off of one run, 41-yard run. So close to half of that. But he got the work. But the thing is, it's what he didn't do, which is he wasn't in on third downs. He didn't receive a target. He didn't catch a pass. And while James White didn't get nearly as many rushes in him, he outscored him because catches and passes are worth more than carries. And if, and if Damian Harris is not going to be involved in the receiving game, it severely hampers his upside. So if I were you... I'd be trying to move him. I'd be trying to sell Damian Harris, even at Alabama, man. And y'all know I, I watched the tape, baby. This is college. The, the foundation of this shit is college. And at Alabama, he was fantastic. But I always thought that Najee Harris and Josh Jacobs were better than Damian Harris. And I believe Fantasy Twitter wants Damian Harris to be something that he's not. I think he's a fine running back. I think he's a guy, man. He's a, he's a running back and can't take carries. He's Sonny Michelle, but without banged up knees. Yeah, I don't know, man. But makes a list. Over 100 yards, I'd be selling him. If I had him, I got him in the league, I'm probably going to try to flip him. Damian Harris. Now, the last player that I want to talk about, Chicago Bears wide receiver Darnell Mooney, the speedster out of Tulane. Listen, man, 4-3, 40-yard dash. We know that 40 time and fantasy points isn't indicative, but he's got speed. He's got home run ability. But what he did do was out-snap Anthony Miller 46-43. to he out-targeted Anthony Miller, 9-5. to five. And on those nine targets, the distance traveled air yards, 123 to Anthony Miller, 42. Give me the guy that's got the air yards. Give me the guy that is going to take the, that Allen Robinson is going to take the attention away from Mooney. And if he's getting that type of, of, of target distance, that kind of target volume, somebody that we want. And right now, ain't nobody talking about Mr. Mooney. So you probably can acquire him quite cheap. Just remember I tell you, man, Darnell Mooney is somebody that we need to have on our rookie radars. Definitely a rookie riser because outside of Allen Robinson, Tariq Cohen is down for the season. Miller may be in the doghouse. I don't know who their tight end is. Uh, Cordero Patterson ain't what everybody wants him to be. They got to find somebody else to throw the ball to, especially if Allen Robinson is drawing double coverage. Darnell Mooney is somebody to keep on your radar. All right, baby. That is it. Week four was in the books. It's a good week. It was a good week. We had some injuries, not as many as week two, and we're going to keep chugging along. We're going to keep chugging along, but here's my thing. Let me tell you this, people. We're at that point in the NFL season where you got to make an honest decision. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, my team is truly a contender or it ain't. And either way, either way, you got to start making preparations for 2021. And there's no better place in fantasy and dynasty in Devi than Destination Devi, the Patreon, the squad, patreon.com forward slash all gas, the Devi database. We're doing film breakdowns. We're talking college. I will have you ready for your 2021 rookie drafts and beyond. 
Come check it out, man. Three bucks a month, minimum to get you in. Seven dollars a month. If you do it annually, you'll save 10%, man. So come over, join the squad, Destination Devi, patreon.com forward slash all gas. As a solo content creator, I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. If you don't want to support monetarily and you just want to rock with me here on YouTube, on the podcast, then hit the subscribe button. Please, people, subscribe to the show. I will greatly appreciate it. We're going to have you locked, loaded, and ready, baby. Hustle, motivate, be great. But I'm rambling, man. I'm out this thing. Deuces.